how they have domains and regions of influence, I can almost mimic this with the magnets. They create these same domain patterns because this is nothing more than magnetism. Gravity is nothing more than magnetism. Nothing more than magnetism. Okay, my friends, I've been making the claims, and uh, I showed you the evidence in the magnetism, and I think I pretty much understand what's going on, and I believe these are nuclear flooded cores, electron floods. The positiveness of the core becomes flooded with the negativeness of the electrons, which creates a surrounding field that has a push to it from the electrons because there's going to be more negative electrons in the core surrounding that core more electrons will not be allowed there will be a zone that will be a no man's land you cannot get here stay away I am pushing you away because I own this internal region they will collect in clouds surrounding those internal regions Okay, Latham's Crazy Machines, one of my favorite guys. He comes up with some fabulous stuff. This goes back to 2014. These are tractor beam magnets, and he is making a quantum nucleus. It's flooded with electrons surrounding a positive core. And watch what it does. All right, here's what he's got. He's got three bigger magnets inverted direction in the center. So he's got an up and a down in the center. He's creating that same thing we had. There it is. Now the electrons come and collect in their cloud formation surrounding it. And they will come to exact places. Watch as he moves it. It sticks between those encapsulating structures that are in the nucleus depending upon the number of electrons or, or positrons and electrons that is heat and the more electrons you force in and push it will force it finally to ex escape now these events happen so millions of times a second all right so here's my claim as this is how i feel about the whole thing this the core of every nucleus is nothing more than a ball of positrons and electrons. And at 1836, which is 918 of each, it's a proton. And it'd be a nice round ball because there's no surface tension. And you have to get a supercomputer to do this. Now, when you add one more, it accepts and it says, okay, I'm okay with that. I'm still resonant, fairly frequent resonance with one additional negative. That makes you flood this ball, and now it becomes a bit of negativity. That's a neutron. A neutron is not negative, uh, neutral, and there is no neutrons. It's just a bunch of little particles put together in a form that ends up having one extra electron. Now, the protons are just no extra electrons they're just positive you know they, they they will attract like that positive chunk so something needs to be looked into in a little bit different manner and uh like i say i believe they might be able to mimic something i want to show you some footage that was sent to me today about apoptosis and about ribosomes and how they bond and work together molecularly because that's what i'm looking into is is the body chemistry and and you know because with that we're nothing more than a chemical factory things come through you they have to be broken down into little tiny pieces little bitty bitty pieces like that and then those little pieces can find their way around to attach to the things that want to use them everything's made out of little lego bricks they're little tiny bits and pieces that are all the same when you get down to the bottom line they always said there's only nucleus uh, neutrons protons and electrons anyway I'm getting rid of the neutrons, and I'm just saying everything's only protons and electrons we are, we, with an upspin and a downspin, and then you close the case. You put one of those out there, it's a red photon. You put t t the two of them together, it's a, it's a green. Maybe double that, eight or f six or whatever, is a blue. And the blue can smash other, other electrons out of its way because it's a bigger piece, that's all. It's spinning faster, it's bigger, it's got more, 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 more angular momentum and more mass 
as it impacts. The other ones are smaller and spinning slower, so they just don't have the energy to do the same thing the blue does. So let's get deep into this, because it's, it's really interesting. It's not all that hard. It really isn't. Once you get rid of neutrons, then you can deal with reality. Now you're in a place of reality. And once you say, oh, I can accelerate light, I can do all these things they said it wasn't possible. Well, they are, they are possible. I'll show you right now they're possible. That's red laser light. That is that same laser light accelerating. And that acceleration turns it easily seen into the particles that it is because now it is con concussing and that is the nature of these domains when they impact with each other. Here it's being forced through a restriction called a venturi. It is crushing each other into these restriction zones that are not allowed, just like you took two magnets, pushes the two pluses or the two minuses together, they say, get away from me. They, they will not allow that. Well, we're not allowing them not to allow it. We're forcing them to allow it. And they create plasma, which is where they do not want to be, touching each other in an explosive manner, spraying out the back of the Venturi, creating what CERN would call Higgs bosons in the neutrino range, which is electron neutrinos. Now, they use the Higgs bosons in the 8,000 times bigger range. They are the same particles, just bigger chunks. That's what I'm saying. And when they come out of the Venturi, they come out in these spinning little zzz particles that are accelerated. That's acceleration. So Einstein's wrong about that. They're wrong about ether. These All these dots in the air are ether particles. They're wrong about the speed. They're wrong about the neutrons. So let's get into some reality here. This is where it comes out of here, sizzling, and this is spinning fast particle, concusses with the ether particles that are free floating in the air, which is static electricity that collects on you as free electrons. They are ubiquitous everywhere. That is what's electric. The only place they aren't are in is on insulators and things like that, where they specifically engineer it not to allow extra electrons so that it cannot conduct. That's all. The air conducts. You walk through the air, you're going to collect electrons. You, I don't care who you are, you're going to be collecting electrons if you have moisture in you. They like moisture. Moisture is a polar molecule. H2O, it's extremely polar. It has the, the, the hydrogens give up their negative to the oxygen, which becomes extremely negative. The other side of the molecule, the hydrogens become extremely positive because they've given away their electron. So you have a bar magnet, in effect, attracting electrons to those hydrogens. H2O, they don't even call it that. I, well, I don't. I, I think it's H3O or something now, but because um, it really is, it, it's, it's not going to stay in that configuration. It, it's going to look for an attachment. Well, it's not going to be that big, heavy-duty attachment. Of course, water isn't that heavily attached anyway. You can split it up and evaporate it and do all those things to it. So, I mean, this is all chemistry, and, and it's very. It's, it's pretty obvious to understand after you look at it. These are the Higgs fields they talk about. I can understand that. As that spinning particle polarizes all of these magnetic little particles, the negative electrons that are in the air, they're the electrons. They're negative. They get pushed by that negative, coming spinning through, which these are bar magnets spinning like a little polar bar magnet. And they go, boop, 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 and you can see them surrounding that, because it's spinning so damn fast, that these have to set up zzz, right around them as they go. You end up with this kind of a thing over here, these Higgs fields, and we had a white particle spinning backwards here. That's the white particle. It concussed with one of the regular Higgs, and it dro drove off this little white trumpet. Now, I, this is what it is. I don't know what it is, but it's, it, it turned into one of these. So I have to assume it's one of these in disguise. <laughs> and it's giving off something here. I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on, to be honest with you. Because they, they look like two completely different events, and this looks like it's causing this event. That's all I can say. Then you over here, this is the particles I'm talking about. You've got an upspin and you've got a downspin. They have to attach together when they are photons. Right? Photons don't have 
have, have a charge, they say. So I'm saying this is the plus, or the yeah, minus, really. I go with the negative. Well, actually, it's the other way around. <laughs> it's the positive is the up, and the negative is the down. Because Earth pulls everything to Earth negatively. Anything negative would be pulled to Earth. Absolutely. You go over and touch a water pipe, and you got static on you, boop, gone. Lightning comes to Earth. Electricity right to the ground. You ground everything because it wants those electrons. So, anyway, I guess we'd have to change that. The uh, upspin is the negative upended particle. So, the upspin is our electron. Yeah, you know, that's what I had originally. No, that's the downspin. I'm getting confused. We'll make this thing work out. But it's, it, there's an up and a down. Let's put it that way. I don't really care at this point. <laughs> And this is the spinner. And they're all they all spin like that, but you don't get them all in a high speed. Uh, show them really exhibiting themselves because some of them don't come through the, the the venturi clean like this one. They went flying right through there. It looks like to me they come through the same speed. You see that? You see that? These are all the same distance apart because they're at the same speed at this point, and they are all slowing at the same speed. They're obviously the same particles. They obviously came from the same force source. They obviously are slowing down. They obviously are spinning to the right, which means it would drift to the left. Because every time it spins, it's a little to the left. We're picking it up, and there it is. It can't get any more clear than that. So that I am saying is, and they, a lot of this is agreed upon science. I'm not stepping out of the boundaries too far here. They're saying that light spins with a right hand rule. That is a right hand rule. Spins this way, goes that way. Spins this way, goes that way. That is what it's doing. They say light is a photon. It has no charge. It has a plus and a minus together and no charge. That is what you're seeing, red photons of light. They say there's Higgs fields, and they will surround a charged, high-speed particle and create these polar fields around it. That is what you see from Cheryenkov radiation, and that is what you see from an accelerated particle or from a particle that is coming into a region that is denser than it is, ex is now, which is the case in the nuclear power plants. Then you get the concussion. Then you get the Cheryenkov. Then you get the Higgs, I mean the bosons, then you get the Higgs. And then you get that, whatever the hell that is. All right, this, this is so cool doing this. Now, if you look real careful, my thinking is, is that the white lines are literally electron areas. Right? The dark lines are influences of positiveness. So where you see these border lines of negative, they're actually very, very distinct lines. They keep away the positiveness. And there will this will is probably the most attractive spot on this whole configuration. Now let's look at that one and I'll show you what that looked like before I made it. Is this now that is a filled ball. Now this one here is not. Now let's see what that does compared to the one we just saw. You see? That? Now, at certain numbers, they'll make this pattern here that'll be just perfectly consistent up and down around the. But they are not resonance stable until you get that exact certain pattern. That's that wave function. I remember the wave function. Remember how they will only lock in at certain domain regions at cer certain frequencies. The frequency is the key. And the frequency relates to the number of particles. Because when you see that one particle there, that's not one particle. That's 1837 particles inside of the hydrogen nucleus, the single, what they call a proton, it's not a proton. It's bigger than a proton, first of all. It is a, it's literally a, a, what they would consider a neutron, which is an additional negative on top of the proton. 
So it's instead of 1836, which is 918 and 918 positrons, electrons, it has 919 electrons in the core, keeping the additional electrons from coming in, as I showed in the tractor beam magnets. All right, there's what you're looking at right there. That is the two particles attached. There's an upspin and a downspin, and they're attached. Now, if you look at this, what you're going to see is you see this white cloudy area up here? There's no white that cloudy area down here. You see that white ring around the top ball? There's two balls. The top ball is here, and the bottom ball, let me see if you can see this, top ball is here, bottom ball is here. This is your, your downspin, this is your upspin. That is a different polarity, which I'm going to call the negative because the negative surrounds the cores. The negatives flood the core. What that means is on the outside of the positive attractive core, you have electrons that are just crunched around it. Then you want to pull in other ones, but they say, no, you can't get here. I got a ring here to keep you away. You see that ring? Stay out. So they come into this dark region to try to approach that ring and cannot make it. This side has a positive attractive force instead of the negative attractive source. That's the positron. Right? Now you could jiggle these little things back and forth. I can't exactly get to its lower, lowest energy state. That's my problem. And I could probably see this in a supercomputer because there would be no frictional surfaces. I can't make those two. I could turn this watch. I'm going to show you. The, oop, boy, they're reactive in singles. Woo, they go flying. The singles are really cool. Watch this. I'm sorry. I'm going to get into a couple little things because it, it, it's really fun to watch this. Now, look, see what a single will do? Here it is right here. Let me back out so you can see this. All right, here's the single. Watch. Now I'm going to roll over it. You see that? Boom. There's the single in its polar... Whoops. Okay, let me get it right there. Somewhere right there. it is. Right in there. All right. There we go. Now, that is in its polar configuration. All right, just so you understand, this is these are my claims. These are the Higgs fields. It's a collision occurs. For them, it's a head-on collision. For us, it's just forcing them into each other's regions. No difference whatsoever. They spray out of here these Higgs fields in all different ways, and so do we. Theirs is 8,000 times bigger because they're using two sets of, of protons. So they're using like four protons, I believe, helium nucleuses, and they're smashing them together head to head at almost the speed of light creating all of the little bitty 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 bits pits which is there's 8,000 of them each core has 1836 so you got four cores so you got 8,000 somewhere around there and they just go all over the place that's what I'm saying now I talked about cherry and cough radiation which is uh, an energetic radiation that is coming into a region where it concusses. Let's just put it that way. The Cherenkov radiation from a muon produced by a muon neutrino event yields a well-defined circular ring in the photon, but it's just one pop because it's a heavy particle. Now, when you get down, these are the heavy particles that CERN works with. Same stuff, though. Same identical stuff. Identical. Ours comes through at an extremely high speed and literally hits almost like glass. The air, when it comes into the standard air after being accelerated, it is smashing into each region. There's particles all over the place just sitting around here having a nice time and wham! They go flying everywhere and that is what you see and that is what I showed. And that happens because the Cherenkov radiation from the electron, which we are working with, is a light shower produced by an electron, which we are working with, neutrino event, produces multiple cones, which we showed, and therefore a diffuse ring in the detector array, which was a cell phone camera. They are fabulous at picking up these events. 
All right, so stay tuned. We're going to go through this whole thing about all the different stable states and how Crookes radiometers work and, you know, the whole thing, the light and the frequencies and the plasma and the electron clouds and where the dark matter is in the universe. It's extremely simple. It's, it's just amazing. It's the light that's coming to us from the sun and from all the other radius luminous bodies. It's ether. It's ether. That's all it is. We're scrubbing through that, spinning with the magnetic stripes of our ocean, which they disregard. They are nothing more than field windings in a um, commutator. And that spins in a magnetic soup, which is the ether, and we are cascading through it, spinning, creating our magnetic field. And I think we're approaching dense ether, which will heat our magnetic field because it is nothing more than pushing those particles away. The denser the particles are, the 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 the, um, the armature will push harder and harder and harder against it. The more particles it impacts with, it's as simple as that. If we hit a region of dense particles and they're dense negative particles and they impact with our magnetosphere and that's why our magnetosphere is 56,000 degrees. Wait one second. All right, I'm going to leave it at this because this is a real issue for me. I, I, I can't believe that they don't account, they don't take this into account. Earth is a field generator. Our Earth has these magnetic fields and it has literal stripes in the ocean. Look it up, ocean magnetic stripes. And they are also in the earth, all over the earth too. I was looking about in Ethiopia today. Now, what is it here? 80 degrees down here. Well, it's getting hot, it's getting hot. Yeah, it's getting hot. How come, oh, minus, one, uh, minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit right up here. Minus 120 degrees up there. How come it's getting hotter here? Then it goes up to 2,700, then it goes up to 58,000 when we hit our magnetosphere. Why? It's scrubbing through particles that we are cascading through spinning, creating our magnetic field, which at least keeps these particles from crashing through our bodies, the bigger ones anyway. All right, now, I, I also contend that this black hole that they just showed the pictures of shows that the ether exists because it's coming at us, smashing into its forward movement as it spins. They're saying it's spinning this way. I agree with that. It's spinning. This part is concussing as it comes towards us. And it's concussing not just because it's spinning. It's concussing because it's being flattened out by the it's smashing into the ether that is in front of it, exciting those more, and then trailing off. I show it very clearly in there. No physicist can explain the hydrogen nucleus. Not explainable. Light. Light is shown here broken into three particles, the three leptons, the red, the green, and then the blue. And they are very easily seen. And then the white Higgs field. You see that? Brown is the red, the long frequency, the green, the less long, and the blue, the, the, the very powerful, heavy particle. And that's why it doesn't go as long. The red continues on because it's, it's, a, a, it's a weaker particle, but it spins slower through the, the medium that it's spinning through, so it doesn't impact as quick. The white is the accumulation, all three of them together, in a Higgs field. So. I think I've made my case. It's time for somebody to respond to this. And then we can get down to fusion. Because fusion could save the Earth. And not understanding the most basic, basic particles, you're never going to get to fusion. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I want to be shown I'm wrong. I'm showing evidence that exceeds anything that anybody has shown. Yeah, absorb that. Because it's true. And it ain't bragging if it's true. So if it is true, we're just wasting our time smashing things with a bigger hammer over at CERN. The particles are never going to change. There's, there is a certain number of them in each particular proton and what they call a neutron. And they have an upspin, a downspin, I go with all that. And you can have a half spin, an upspin, half, and a downspin, half, and a third, and so forth. Yes, absolutely. 
And that's the only way you can do it is with this. And the only way that you can go with pro uh, um, hydrogen. It's the only way. It works. It just doesn't work. One gigantic proton, one little tiny electron. It's silly. So, stay with Mount Fossil University. And we'll get through this. I'm, I'm going to go through all the different things I got up here. I got a lot of stuff on this. All right? Thank you, my friends. We'll get through it. I'm going to leave it at this, because if this is what I think it is, and it is what I think it is, and nobody can convince me it's not, that is the light from a red laser, and it is being accelerated. That is that stretching. That is literally the particle beam. There's no particles smashing through out here. They own regions around them corresponding to that huge area. Then when they come through, they get out of my way, and everybody does, and it sort of glows in the air, and it warms up a little bit, but then when they start to back up on themselves, they display as their own particles, because now they are extremely perturbed. When they are forced through the accelerator, you end up with plasma. Plasma is what they are wanting to create fusion. Plasma means that the particles are in disarray. They are in chaos. They are particulated into little tiny bits and pieces and they will come back together because in the air they gobble back together according to these polarities and they'll come back to helium instead of these heavy hydrogens. You will end up with a whole ton of electricity left over. That's fusion and that is what could be created here. This is passive. There is no additional input here. Zero. None. You shoot your particles through it, probably in a vacuum. Then you have to have some kind of containment vessel and some kind of, uh, you know, electrodes and all that business. They can do that. I know they can do that. What you got to do is get to the point where you end up changing your heavy hydrogens down into heliums, and then you can do whatever you want with the excess.